What's up, digital artists and filmmakers? Ryan Constantino here with Upper State Entertainment, and today I want to share with you a tutorial on how to make a really cool hexagonal mesh. It looks kind of like graphene or a microscopic chemical of some kind inside of Cinema 4D using the Surface Deformer tool. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are inside of Cinema 4D, and the first thing we're going to want to do is add an end side object to our scene. And uh, we're going to scale that way down because we want the final render to look kind of like a microscopic scene. So we want the, the depth of field to be really shallow. And then take your spine and drop it into a MoGraph cloner object. And then we're going to uh, change the height of the cloner object for all of the splines to just barely line up. And the better, the closer you can get this to matching, the better your mesh will look at the very end. So let's see, uh, right about there. And then on the count, this will be the amount of hexagons that go vertically to determine the height of your honeycomb graphene mesh. And then take your cloner object and drop that into an extrude object. And make sure on the extrude object that you've got hierarchical selected in the object attributes tab in order to make sure all of the splines are extruded. Go over to the caps section and uh, select none. We don't need those. And then what you'll do is right click on the extrude object and select current state to object. And I'm going to go ahead and group the old one and turn that off just in case we need to get back into that. But we don't need that for right now. And then flip open all of these nulls that are created and you'll see all of these polygons in place of the cloner object that we just had a second ago. So select all of those, right click and do connect objects and delete. And we can get rid of all of these nulls, we don't need those. And the next thing we need to do is make sure that this is all one object. Now you can see that the individual cloner polygons are not exactly correct. And the easiest way to fix that is make sure you're in your vertices mode, select all of the vertices. On your keyboard, hit U, Shift O, and that'll bring up the optimized dialog box. And uh, we're going to want to weld all of the points and use a tolerance of something like one centimeter. Um, by default, it says something like 0.01, .01, but we want to turn that up to one. And then when I click OK, you'll see that it'll merge all of these joints into one object. The next thing we have to do is select all of the faces of these hexagons and that'll come in handy later which I'll show you. So once you have all of your hexagon faces selected go up to the select menu option and then go down to set selection and then this will come in handy later we'll show you. Okay so moving on to creating the mesh we're gonna we're gonna need to clone one more of these columns to get them to fit correctly because of the shape. So take that polygon and drop it into another cloner and on the cloner, we just want to do a count of two. And instead of up, we want up and to the right. And that'll get us the repeating pattern that we need. And sometimes it's a lot easier to jump into the front camera and see exactly how it's lining up. Okay, so once you've got this reasonably lined up, the next thing we're going to do is make the cloner object editable by hitting C on your keyboard. And what that's going to do is give you two of the same exact polygon, still with the faces selected, which is what we want. And uh, we can take it out of that null and take these two polygons, merge them by right clicking and selecting connect objects and delete. And we're going to use the same exact method to optimize the mesh and create one complete polygon. So we can zoom in here to kind of see what's going on with these points. We're going to hit U on the keyboard and then do shift O for optimize. And then we want to weld the points, click OK. And there we go. So now we've got one complete polygon. And if you flip over to the edge mode, you'll see that we still have the faces selected, which is what we want. All right, so take your object and drop that into another cloner. And then uh, we'll start out by just doing a count of two so we can see what's going on. And in the amount section, we want to just move it on the X. And we can jump into the front camera, see what's going on. We're going to get that lined up best that we can. It looks pretty good. All right. So once you have it lined up, you can just increase the amount of the count, and it'll create a honeycomb mesh in the however whatever size that you need. Okay, and then it's the same exact method to optimize the mesh and connect all of the points. 
uh, just click on the cloner object and hit C on your keyboard, and that'll create all of these individual polygons. Select all of them, right click, and then do connect objects and delete, and you'll have one complete polygon like that. Jump into your vertices mode, and we'll zoom in so we can see what's going on here. Let's go to right about here. We can see that this technically is not connected yet. So make sure all of your vertices are selected. U, Shift, O. That'll bring up the optimize. Click OK. And that'll weld everything. And now we've got one cool looking honeycomb object. This is where the set selection tag comes in handy after you have combined all of your shapes to create one polygon. And um, all you have to do is click on the edge mode and it should select all of the ones for you. But if not, you can just double click your set selection tag and it'll bring you all of the front faces. So now that we have all of the front faces of our honeycomb selected, go up to mesh commands and then do edge to spline. And what that's going to do is create a spline in the same exact shape of where all of these edges are. We can pull that spline out and then we're just going to take that old cloner, throw it into our backups. We don't need that right now. And so what we're looking at is a spline in the same exact shape as that honeycomb. And this allows you to do a lot of cool things. You can take this and edit that or run it through other modifiers very easily. Drop the spline into a sweep nerb. And um, I like to use an end side because that allows you to change the amount of rounding that is in each of the pieces. So we're just going to shrink it down a bunch because we don't want it to be too, too much. And then we'll drop that directly into our sweep mode. And here we go. Here's the basis of our honeycomb mesh. Of course, the inside is a little bit too thick, so let's scale that down a bit. Okay, so there's your graphene mesh, and uh, you can take the inside and increase the amount of sides and to determine how round uh, the pieces are. Of course, you're gonna get a lot of polygons, so just be careful about that. So once you have your mesh and you're ready to start using the surface deformer, go ahead and just make a copy of your sweep object just in case you need to get back into that later. And then hit C on your keyboard and it'll create polygons out of that entire mesh. Now all of these caps, you can just get rid of them because what they are is they're sitting inside of each one of these little areas and we cannot see them so it doesn't really matter. Okay then you're gonna add an, a landscape object and we can decrease the segments because we don't need all of that much rounding. And uh, I'm going to turn off borders at sea, sea level because I want this kind of fabric-y looking thing, right? Then in the Deformers tab, select the Surface Deformer and then make that a child of your sweep. And then select Surface and then drag your landscape into the Surface selection. And for type, we don't want projection, but we want mapping. Now, of course, it looks a little funky, but you can change the plane to X, Y to get it to map correctly. I'm just going to turn the landscape off so we can just see the graphene. And then inside the attributes for the surface deformer, you can change the scale in all three directions to make sure that it fits the landscape exactly how you want it to. And uh, you probably need to increase the, the, uh, the Y scale to actually give it that thickness. Just use one. So next thing we want to do is add some animation, and uh, we're going to do that by using the Formula Deformer onto the landscape. Select your landscape object, go up to the Deformer tab, and then select Formula, and then make that a child of the landscape. And you'll see immediately it just kind of turns it into this crazy ripply looking thing. And if you hit play, you'll get that type of crazy animation. Maybe you're looking for that, which is kind of cool. So to tweak the animation for this, you can use the size of the formula to uh, increase or decrease how it affects the landscape object. And then of course you can uh, move the formula object around to change where the ripples are, the center point or the, uh, the epicenter of where the ripples are coming out. So something like that's kind of cool. And then you can get that ripple animation going. And if it's a little bit too fast for you, you can click on formula and change this last value to something lower like 0.1 would be uh, you know half as fast or if you want to go even slower you can do 0 0.05 and it'll go slower and uh, yeah ok 
Okay, there you have it. So that is my method for creating a graphene mesh inside of Cinema 4D using the Surface Deformer tool. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.